Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, collets. All right, let's talk collets. First, what's a collet and why should a knife maker even care? I'll be honest, I started out in the forge and anvil world and I didn't even get a mill for quite a few years. I don't think I even knew what a collet was for like five or six years after I started making knives. But now I use various types of collets umpteen times a day. So let's start at the beginning and see where they might fit into your knife making world. This is a collet. So is this. And so is this. Now I'm going to show you some cool uses for collets later in the video, but first let's talk about how they work. A collet is basically a springy tube that you can put cylindrical tools in. Drills, end mills, burrs, grinding wheels, cutoff wheels, router bits, rotary saw blades, you name it. If it spins around, you can probably put it in a collet. The way they're designed, they generally have longitudinal cuts that allow you to smash the whole thing together so it holds onto the tool. The basic use is to hold tools in rotary devices like mills, lathes, routers, and drills. There are tons of different kinds of collets, but here are probably the most common ones in the knife maker's shop. The 5C is used in a ton of different applications, some of which I'll show you in a minute. The R8 is typically used in vertical mills to hold tools, end mills being the most obvious tool of choice there. ER collets are typically used in CNC mills to hold tools, though they're also attached to Morse tapers to hold drills and just all kinds of other things. So there are tons of other kinds of collets out there, but these are probably the most common ones that would be found in knife making shops. There are two main approaches used by collets. In virtually all cases, collets tighten by being squashed into a tapered cone or a cone-shaped cavity, which in turn causes the collet to squeeze shut. Now in the first case, the squashing is done by pulling the collet into the taper. That's how these R8 and 5Cs work. The R8 uses a drawbar that threads into the inside of the collet, whereas the 5C generally has external threads that pull from the outside, though they can also be pulled from the inside in some cases. Others, like this humble Dremel and this ER collet, have a threaded cap which presses the collet down from the front. Either way, the result's the same. As the collet is forced into the taper, it squeezes the collet, which then clamps down on the tool so it won't fall out. ERs come in a variety of sizes, 16s, 20s, 32s, and so on. As you can see here, this ER16 is a lot smaller than this ER20. Each number accommodates a wide range of sizes, with the numbers changing as they accommodate larger and larger tools. So look, we've all seen basic drill chucks. Very convenient. One chuck, a gazillion drill bit sizes. Whereas with collets, obviously you have to swap out collets every single time you change to a different size tool. Now this seems like a giant pain in the neck, which it kind of is, but here's why collets make sense. Unlike a drill chuck, which will hold an infinite number of tools within a given range, collets are made for a very specific size of tool. This set of 5Cs runs in common sizes from a sixteenth of an inch to an inch and an eighth. These R8s cover a fairly similar range. So why use a collet instead of a chuck? A couple reasons. First, collets can be made to run more accurately. Every tool that rotates wobbles at least a tiny bit. This wobble is known as runout. A typical Jacobs type keyed drill chuck has run out in the four thousandths of an inch range. Collets of various sorts can shave that down to one thou or even significantly less. In many applications, who cares? In a lot of drilling, for instance. But in others, the level of precision you get from a collet is really crucial. In machining, for instance, four thou is just huge. 
So if you're the kind of person who does precision drilling, folding knife pivots for instance, you can buy collets that will mount in the Morse tapers of your drill press and help you get more accurate pivot holes. But wait, there's more. Chucks are fine for pushing down as you do with a drill, you know, which always has pressure from above. But when you go sideways, the way an end mill works, problems. The cutting action of the helical flutes in end mills causes them to pull from the spindle, basically trying to yank the tool out of the holder the whole time they're working. With a drill chuck, they'll tend to pull themselves out. Because a collet is sized to a particular diameter of stock, it has much more surface area in contact with the tool than a drill chuck does, resulting in more friction and therefore better clamping pressure. So collets are less susceptible to what's known as pullout. Okay, fine, you say, super de duper if I have a mill, but I don't, so still not caring. Fair enough. Everything I've talked about so far is pretty much irrelevant if you don't have fancy machine tools. But here's the thing about collets. They aren't just used for holding tools. There's a clue in the last shot. You can actually hold the workpiece, you know, a pin or a folding knife pivot, a thumb stud, the shank of some kind of tool that you're making in a collet. And then you can do things to that piece by flipping that collet around in different controlled directions so that you can go every 90 degrees or a whole bunch of different things. Like what? Well, let's take the simplest thing first. Check out this little 5C toolkit. This block right here allows you to put a 5C collet in here, secure a particular part, and then stick it in a vise and repeat the same operation. Drilling a hole, milling a flat, whatever, in precisely the same place at 0, 90, 180, and 270 degrees. It's pretty common in knife making to want to do the same thing to both sides of a part and to do it with perfect symmetry so that, say, it's exactly the same on both sides of the handle. Here I'm making a screwdriver for a custom application. I mill one side of the tip, then flip the collet block over and mill the other side exactly the same way. I don't change the tools at all. Perfect gunsmithing type parallel tip screwdriver. Took about two minutes to mill it and no worries about it being asymmetrical or out of parallel as I would if I ground it by hand. And here's a tool that will do the same thing at 60 degree angles. Want to mill a custom hex tool? Need to drill holes at 60 degree angles? This little gizmo will help you do it. So again, obviously I'm using a mill in this case, but with creative use of a filing guide, for instance, these could be used to improve hand filing operations. Or you can set these up on the table of your grinder and you can grind precise symmetry or precise angles, whatever, into different parts. A cheap Chinese set of five C's like this is around a hundred bucks. And the little toolkit, less than $100. Now look, are they amazingly high quality? Uh, no, but for this kind of light duty work holding application, they're fine. By the way, I said five C's are for holding round stock. Well, that's not all they do. There are five C's for square and hex stock, as well as serrated collets that can grab all kinds of things. There are also what are known as emergency collets, that you can kind of customize. So there are a lot of different options when it comes to holding things in 5C collets. If you do a lot of repetitive work on lathes, you can get 5C collet attachments for the headstock that will be much more accurate than three jaw chucks and quicker to set up than four jaws. Here's another handy gizmo. It's a spin indexer. You can grab all kinds of things with them, but at the heart of the tool is a 5C collet. Lock the indexer to your table or vise, slide the collet in, put an item in the collet, and tighten it up. Then this index plate allows you to turn the plate to specific angles, lining up the numbers on the plate with an arrow here. I won't get into all the details of how it works, but the basic idea is that you can set it to extremely precise angles and then perform whatever operation you want to the workpiece repeating those angles over and over if necessary. Milling, drilling, grinding, whatever, you can just keep doing it at those angles over and over. 
again, as with all machine tools, really nice ones cost a fair amount of money, but the fine people of China are pumping out these low quality ones for dirt cheap. And for most knife makers, they're plenty good. You could decorate pivot heads, make custom tools, mill a hex wrench attachment, all kinds of fun stuff you can do with these. And what about the humble Dremel tool? I had one for quite a while before I realized that you could actually swap these collets out. They have, I think it's a 16th and an 8th inch size. So you can put tools of different shank sizes in there and they'll still run fine. All you got to do, pop the top off, pull the collet out, swap it out, and you're good to go with a different size tool. Okay, so if I just took up knife making last week, would I run out and buy a set of 5C collets and a spin indexer? Absolutely not. But if you bought a mill or you're just starting to make folders, the more that you know about collets, the better off that you're going to be. And these 5C type sets could really be handy for you. So some general points about collets. For collets to work right, you got to treat them right. Basically, that just means that you want to keep them as free of dirt and oil as you can. Oil will cause them to lose the friction that you need for proper clamping. Also, don't tighten them without anything in the chuck. If you do that, you can break off the little arms or fingers or whatever they're called. You know, one of the interesting things I've found about tools is that a lot of times I'll buy them and I'll kind of use them, you know, here and there, but not all that much. And then suddenly I just seem to internalize whatever the principle of that tool is. And I'll realize that I can solve a ton of problems that I never even anticipated using that tool for. And collets are like that, especially the 5C collet sets. I guarantee you that some of our viewers will have come up with really cool ways of using collets that I've never seen, that I've never even thought of. So if you have a collet trick for knife making, by all means, post it in the comments below. All right, guys, thanks for watching and see you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon.